Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. That's one of those uh, occasions that comes along and people take a holiday, but they quite often don't talk about what Memorial Day really is other than a day off. So I'm so glad to have Reverend Mary Gary here today to talk a little bit about the past, the energy, and the, uh, the hope that it brings that we can also have a memorial time where we remember to be nice to each other and be helpful with each other. Where the, I think you all know me, if not, I'm the Reverend Dottie Boone and you're at the, the, the CCL, the Center for Creative Living. And we wanna thank you so very much and see all these bright and shiny faces, it's, it's incredible. And the person wandering through the back is Gabrielle at, at Halovich and uh, she is in charge here uh, she, uh, of the Billy DeFrank Center. But you're a volunteer today. Today, she's a today she's a volunteer. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, and and as you'll notice back there, there's free food. There is a bag if you didn't happen to bring one. And please, uh, it has been donated. And uh, take whatever you want that you can use, and uh, leave some for somebody else too. So we uh, we have food there. And uh, any of you that want to have a birthday celebration, if, do we have a birthday this week? Hello, Ruth, when's your birthday? Today. Oh. Today, oh, hey, hey. Hey. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday. Come on and get, I want get my your beads. beads. Yes, yes. I, I want my beads. You get your beads. Yeah, I want the green one. Yay, oh, she knew what she wanted all day. Hey. Hey. Yep. Hey. Sure you know? Did. We are so glad to have you here on your birthday. Thank and, you. And anything else you're gonna do exciting today? My kid is making, they're 20, is making me mapo tofu for dinner. Well, good. And my husband already made me uh, shortbread. Well, yay, so look at that. Very happy. I, yeah, yeah. This is a happy day for you, Will. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, where's my long birthday song? Let's for a change to a kind of in harmony. Are you ready? And let's go. This is your birthday song. It is very long. I have no idea what harmony means, but it sounds like a good word to use. It's a musical word. It's a musical word. Any other announcements? Anybody have something exciting they'd like to talk about? Or, or we, okay, Joan. I am gonna move right over here, okay? Good morning. Good morning, Joan. So on uh, Thursday night on Zoom, uh, we I did my uh, astrology class Spiritual astrology, how astrology can help you as a minister. And there were three people uh, watching and participating, plus me explaining it. And it went really well. And some of the things that, um, the, some of the ways you can help people is by knowing when the bumps in the road are coming up, like the Saturn returns at 30 and 60, and, and people their lives change. So if you know a little bit about that, it can help you in talking with people. The other thing I learned, which, which is new to me, and I don't remember learning it 100 years ago when I first learned astrology. <laughs> well, 50 years ago, a while ago. Is that the North Node tells you what your goal is in life. The South Node tells you what talent you have. That's so, important. Yeah, uh, so it's pretty easy to figure those out. But those are things that can help you uh, 
just with a smattering of astrology that can help you in in talking to people, helping them through their crises when they come to you and say, what the (laughs) heck is going on? Mm -hmm. You know, so many people when I was in financial services would wake up and they were right around 50, 48, 49, 50. They'd wake up one morning and say, oh shit, I have to do something about retirement. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a uh, Jupiter return at age 48 when your life expands and you move into a, a new segment of your life. So those little things, just little nuggets, could help you, I, I believe, a lot in um, work, working with astrology and counseling and being looking forward to as a minister. So I'll be doing it again. Watch for my announcement, okay? Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yay! Woo! Okay. Anybody else have any announcements that they would like to make? Uh, uh, John, our volunteer, uh, we're sending him prayers. Uh, and uh, he, John Perkins, and uh, he is taking a respite and uh, has been going through a difficult time. So uh, anytime you wonder, where's John? Just send a, a prayer. We would appreciate that. I have sure. to get both student cards and for, you John, for everyone to sign. Thank you. You went to see him, Lord? No, I haven't. Okay. I'm going on Friday. I okay. have cards for us to sign. Good, good. Okay. That'll be wonderful. Yeah. We were away at Angel's Camp and sending cards from Angel's Camp. So uh, I could get some of those from there, too. Anybody else have any other announcements that they would like to make? Okay, and uh, Tim, we're going to be doing a meditation, and if you wouldn't mind accompanying me, I think that would be wonderful. And uh, well, I'm gonna, oh, be speaking next week. Thank you. I'm going to be speaking next week. Oh, okay. okay. Well, stand up and tell us about it. Oh, let me get the things right. I, I, I can tell what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I, I've got sweet nothings in my ear. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, I'm, next week I'm going to be speaking, and um, it's going to be a, a very quick overview, 20 minutes, uh, overview of Ebert, the process that I've developed, how to, get, how to identify and get rid of and stay clear of uh, earthbound entities. And, you know, first you need to know what they are and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, basically I'll have a handout and we'll just zoom right through it. And then for the students, you know, I'm going to be doing a Saturday uh, something as soon as we figure out when um, and teach more about Ebert. It's, it's something that if you never use it with anybody else, it's very important, I think, it's very important for you to know how to, how to deal with this kind of stuff on your own. You know, that you need to go, when, it, when, it, when it's at the end of your life, you need to go, your spirit needs to go to the other side so you can rejoin the Godhead. That's, that's important, that's really important. And then, and then learn and, and be evolved so that you, you know, the more evolved you get, the more enlightened you are, and the, the lighter you are. And the, anyway, you'll, we'll talk about that next week. But the point is, is that y'all come. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, you feel like uh, we're in an AA meeting or something. <laughs> We are, yeah. It's kind of great. Uh, okay, I'd like you all to put your feet flat on the floor. If you have anything in your lap, just just put it down beside you. Close your eyes. And take a nice deep breath. Let's do that again. Let's take a nice deep breath. Just breathe in deeply and then exhale it. And as you ground yourself, let go of all the negativity that has been surrounding you this past week. Just see it fly away. Any thoughts that you have that are not positive, just let them go. And as you do this, you can feel yourself getting lighter, your mind getting clearer, and your spirit is soaring. Each one of you is a child of the Creator. You're here 
for the lessons you need to learn, but you're also here for the joys you will experience. Each time you feel, you feel something joyful, remember it. And every time you feel something negative, just let it go. It's holding on to the negativity that keeps you stuck in the mud. So visualize yourself walking down a road. The sun is on your back. The birds are singing, the flowers are growing. It's springtime, like today. See yourself walking down this road, and it's a magical road because each step you take, you feel lighter and lighter. And as you walk along this road, you look around at the trees and the flowers. You hear the birds and you feel the presence of animals. And each step you take, you feel lighter. And you realize that you are on a journey that this life is a journey and you can feel the sun you can hear the birds you can smell the flowers or you can walk in the dark every time you feel the darkness send it up up creator can handle it but for you when you hold on to the negativity you notice that mud puddle ahead of you. And if you keep becoming more negative, each step you take takes you closer to the goo, the gunk. And when you step into it, you realize you're stuck. It's not easy to pull yourself out of that gunk. All you can think of is the negative and the the wars and the anger and the frustration and the negative sounds that you hear on the television and you're stuck in that morass. Visualize yourself stepping out, stepping out of that guck and putting your foot flat on solid ground and then pulling up the next foot so you have one foot on the ground and one foot in the goo. You kind of balance there. Pull the other foot up. So now you can walk on this path of God's energy. Spirit is there guiding you and helping you. So now see yourself back on this path. You're walking, you're almost running. You're skipping. You can hear music in your head. You can feel love in your heart. The sun is shining. There's a slight breeze in the trees. And as you listen to Tim with his wonderful guitar and his great voice, hold on to that vision of you skipping, running, moving, and the delight in being alive. We're told great thoughts speak only to a thoughtful mind, but great actions speak to all human. If we wish to carry out a positive action, we must first carry within a positive vision. change 
it's so much easier to keep it the same. But then there comes a time to make a new decision. Without it, there's no growth and there's no There is only one thing to say to anyone's past. Thank you for the lessons of times good and bad. And then just one quick note to give to your future. Simply say I'm ready, and that's all it needs to know. Ready, ready. Just open your eyes and come back to the room and give a smile to Tim. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Tim. And we're going to introduce our speaker. And I don't know how many of you don't know Reverend Mary Carey. And if you haven't met her before, you're in for a treat. Reverend Mary has been a part of UCM for Wait a minute, she's talking. Uh, Reverend Mary has been a member of UCM for how many years, Mary? Uh, she's um, 78, since 78. Anybody good at math? 78, really. Wow. <laughs> long time. 45 years. A long time, almost 50. Uh, and she and her husband own a charter, have a charter just like CCL is a charter. They have CIG, Center for Infant Growth. And, uh, she has been the part of the foundation of UCM for years, and we're so proud and honored to have her here. Welcome, Reverend. Yay! Yay. Woo. Come. Come on up. You come on up, and I'm going to okay. sit right behind you, okay? Uh huh. Sure. And when you're good, I pat you, and when you're not good... I was going to say, she pulls on my shirt, I know <laughs> I... Uh... <laughs> and uh, you have a whole half hour. Wow, okay. So do you want to start it? <clears throat> sure. Sure. Um, you know, my, my um, partner in crime sometimes is Janet Childs, and she uh, wasn't able to come. She had a previous commitment. But she forwarded a song, and um, she's my we're going to hear it. So when she says, do it, i got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us are in that way, but uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Beyond the land of life. And wrong, may we meet in harmony beyond the judgment and the fear. We reach out our hands and we are. Let our hearts shine in each other. 
today and um oh I've Mary before you start are there any veterans in the house this is the first time I don't think we've had with none thank uh, you but Tom would have been here but he was yeah. a piano guy. he was a, he's a good veteran um so what I want to talk about is Memorial Day and I want to talk about it not just uh, about the day, which, but I will tell you all about the day. That won't take it too long. And then I want to talk about how what happens to people around the loss of someone, particularly in a war. And then, because Dottie said I had some extra time, and Spirit is so clever, um, I had a dream, and I my grandson uh, typed it up for me. And I was going to share it, and I said, "Well, it's really be crowding it, and it might be too much." But it's it's um, it was kind of an interesting dream, so it's coming too. Yay! <laughs> now this is the time we're talking about. I was going to get here early enough to put it out on the table so everybody could see it. The green is the south, mm -hmm. cleverly enough, and the orange is the north. And you can see that California and Oregon were aligned with the north. And the, um, I don't know, whatever this kind Orange. of orangey tan are the latecomers to the south. That's Kentucky and um, Tennessee. Kentucky, Tennessee, and um, Virginia. They weren't in the original um, declarers, but within a few uh, weeks they had joined them. We'll talk a little bit about that. In the ground um, part? That's, between that's, that's the great unknown. You know, we hadn't settled that part yet. We had named it was the Nebraska Territory and the Kansas Territory, but you can see they're much bigger than uh, what their state of that name ended yeah. up being. Yeah. 
that but that's the area that was just not not assigned to and then that area and part of the reason that was a problem was there was a law passed that you had to bring in one slave state and one free state at the same time because they wanted them even what year was that you're talking about I think it was 1860 I mean look don't be picky daddy I can see it right here and I'm gonna oh that's the map yeah the map is of 1860 but the actual year that the law was passed that said you had to bring in one and another at the same time because there was a great division developing between the north and the south prior to the outbreak of the war and it was but what I would like to do is before we get fully into that I was searching to see who had systems that honored their dead especially their dead warriors and so I spent a little time reading about the Greeks and the Romans and one of the things that was always interesting to me about the Greeks and the Romans was that they had many engagements in which the guideline was fight to the death and I thought you know geez oh geez oh that's kind of a rough team to sign up with and 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 what we found or what I found is that if you were captured and you were alive you were allowed to be made a slave and so you were a slave of the country who so it put a great deal of energy and fight to the death guidelines into the into the wars in the early days and that these are the BC days you know and they were honored both the Greeks and the Romans hosted commemoration ceremonies once a year for all the dead military people that they had so we weren't the first to do that so then how did we get into a civil war I mean pretty you know my bias is very clear I I just don't believe anybody should be a slave and I certainly don't believe there should be hundreds of people that are a slave and that their children and their children's children should be a slave because they were and that was the way the South evolved but the South evolved because it had a different kind of agriculture it wasn't your little family farm and we lived Tom and I lived for seven years in the south because our our son had passed away and our daughter was transferred to North Carolina and so we wanted to give her some support so we went there and she came down with breast cancer I think she never got over losing her brother they were they spoke every day even though they were in their 30s and so it was a very difficult time and the south is not was not my natural Tom can get along anywhere I'm sorry he wasn't here you know Tom could be in a room with who knows who and they'd all love him before it was over and they weren't even sure why he just a nice easygoing clear loving person I on the other hand has taken him 50 years to soften me down but I when I was in high school they called me fireball when I was in college they called me intensity leashed with love so I guess I was making some progress the fact is I'm I'm at nature a scrappy broad and so I didn't do well in the south there their ladies were ladies and I mean ladies they didn't they weren't as spirited in their dress and their opinions you know I had been on loan from Hewlett Packard where I was working to the governor for a few weeks for a special project and so Tom mentioned that that I had had that and I was I was you know Dottie and I was Tom and I and so they asked Tom about what was the governor like and he said well Mary was the one who had that experience well Tom they just couldn't talk to a woman about an experience like that was beyond the box and and when somebody asked him about the war they said well it's really not over and they said oh well you know we thought it was a couple hundred years ago and it's kind of over and they said well we're just resting yeah 
<laughs> so as you can see, I, I mean, as you can imagine, it's, it's complicated. And I thought, now what is that energy? Part of it is they lost. And so if you look at who lost the wars, I did that in, uh, after World War I, the uh, Germans uh, had initiated the war. Mm -hmm. What, you know, gee, surprised. And, um, um, so they initiated the war, but they lost it. And then the people who won it at the time, the, um, the determination of how things would be paid off was made by the French and the English. And they put huge burdens on the Germans so that the Germans couldn't reconstruct their country. They couldn't do anything for a very long time. And so that made them very hostile towards the uh, English and the French. And I said, well, you know, um, they should have known. Well, no, you don't know. You know, you take a position that you think is the right position. You try and move forward with that position. And if, it, if, it, if there's a huge energy that's going on around the position you've taken and the position that others respond to it, I think that it builds something inside you that makes it harder to let it go. And I, I bring that up, that's not the focus of my talk, but I want to bring up the things that I think we need to pay to attention to because I see a little polarization potential in this country these days. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that, have I learned, understated a little bit? <laughs> So I think we have to say, uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with what you're doing, but I'm willing to listen to why you think it's important, because uh, I'm not going to do what uh, young Mary did. I, I was young once, and and um, and wait for a pause so I could jump in with my better point of view. And I was going to try and listen so that I would hear what they were saying. Whether I chose not to, ch to change or not change my position wasn't the point. The point is to let somebody know they've been heard. And then you could say, hmm, you know, or whatever you want to say that sort of that's clear it doesn't work for you. Or change your mind. I don't care. <laughs> that's not what we're here for. That What we're here for is to, to offer tools that allow you to grow spiritually and to have different options. And so that, that's one of the things that we're looking at. After the Civil War ended, it was a, a terrible war. We lost more people in this country in the Civil War than any other war we have ever been involved in. And, and for some, they were, double, they were adding up, you know, how many did we lose in the First World War and the Second World War. Just, and for a while, we had lost more in the Civil War than all wars combined. I don't know if you can continue to say that, but we certainly had terrible losses. And since most of the war was fought in the South, most of the bodies were in the South. And since the prisons, well, the war prisons were terrible, I mean, they weren't good on either side, but again, because there were so many battles and stuff fought in the South, most of the people that were in prison, the, the uh, Yankees, um, they, they checked when we came to be sure we weren't Yankees. We were from California, that was better, but you know, they didn't want me to be a Yankee. Um, <laughs> so we didn't tell them where we were born. <laughs> Smart move. Right, that would have gotten us bigger trouble. We were born in New York, both of us, but you know, we, we learned pretty quickly not to offer that up there. <clears throat> so, what happened is that, is that the people, huge numbers died in the prisoner of war camps. Huge numbers. There was no food. I mean, there was no food for the uh, southern people either. It's not that, um, uh, there, you know, sweetie. So, about September after the war was over, <laughs> they um, had a, the first group, and it was a group of black people that were in, uh, right outside where the, um, the uh, camp was for the prisoners of war, and they put flowers on the northern graves as well as on the southern graves. Many places in the South just put them on the southern graves, and then it was a place in Missouri 
which is right between. Missouri is the blue one, <laughs> between the two, that just it felt so bad to them that they had um, no flowers on the uh, northern graves, that they began to put flowers on the northern graves, and then it spread across the country. And what we did is um, they decided, well, maybe we should make this a holiday. That's a, that's a good idea. So, and by the late 1860s, they began to uh, develop what they called first a decoration day because what they, they did initially was to put flowers on graves. But then they called it a memorial day. Um, and it was a union general who called for an official nationwide day of uh, remembrance on May 30th, a day chosen because it wasn't the anniversary of any particular battle. And they had to look very carefully because if they had picked a day of remembrance that was a day that either the South had won the big battle or the North had won the big battle, the other part of the country wouldn't celebrate it. So um, May 30th was a quiet day of war. <laughs> so, um, and for a while the South didn't want to celebrate with the, the North, so they had their own day. But finally, we, you know, we began to pull things together. And in 1968, um, I think it was uh, Clinton that said, the, um, we should have it on a Monday, so it will be the last Monday of May, and that way Americans can get a three-day weekend. Well, that was very kindly for the soldiers, right? <laughs> but hey, it's America. What can I say? We love it. Um, so I think at this point I'm, I want to move a little bit beyond just talking about the Civil War. And I want to talk about um, war and how war and anger and frustration, how they can get locked into you and what you need to do to begin to release that. And I, I'm going to share a story. Some of you will have heard it because I shared it at a class I taught for Dottie for the, um, the new ministerial students. But I thought on Memorial Day it might be a good story to share. And that was a story of my grandmother coming to me, and, and well, let's say it's a dream, and saying I had to release my stepfather, whom I had a very difficult relationship with. And I said, I don't care what happens to him. She said, oh no, you have to care. I said, I don't care about him, I hate him. He was an awful man to me. And she said, but it's holding you back too. And that's what we have to remember, is no matter how we think we've been aggrieved, no matter how we think we have been taken advantage of, no matter how crummy somebody's behavior was, if that's where your focus, that's where your energy goes, and it, it holds you. It's like, the, it's like um, Dottie was saying in her comments, that energy, the dark energy weights you down and the light energy allows you to lift up. And so to hold on to anger or pain or righteous indignation or all of those things, they take too much from you. That other person isn't impacted by it, they're over somewhere having their own righteous moment, whatever it might be. So it doesn't, it's not like holding on to righteousness makes change, it doesn't. At least not in my 80 plus years of, of experience, it doesn't. So don't do it. Let it go. Modify it. Say, so, you know, you'll never be coming to dinner at my house, but I hope your life works out better than it has in the past. You don't have to say, you know, uh, hi, I've decided to be a, a clear, loving channel of God, and so I thought maybe we could have dinner. No thanks. <laughs> it's not going to go there, and it's not the expectation. But you can say, I am taking all the pins out of the doll. I am doing all the things that I need to do to release you. If I have to toss your picture away, whatever it is, I say to God, free me from my past anger, hurt, pain. Allow me to come fully 
into my experience of you because if we ask you know i have i write it in different places around my house you know different things that i'm writing on and when it comes into my mind i write it down and it says remember to ask i don't understand all the rules up there although i i my i probably don't understand any but i've convinced myself and so one of the things that is that i got in a message that said you better start taking better care of yourself because if you don't they're not going to let us intervene you have to take responsibility for yourself and then we can help you you have to figure out what you want to do and ask and then we can help you because um the story i told about being in contact with people from our uh, ucm church who were in spirit and one of the sweetest ladies of all who said you know when i was down there working with you we would had a thousand things to do we'd have plan a retreat and we'd have to plan the food and get the this packed and do that very busy now she said i'm up here and my expectation is that i'll work on people for healing but nobody asks so ask 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 because they can't bring it to us and i think people like um, ministers in our church we're an unusual little church we have a freedom that's not always available to some people they have to get in in line with the structure not good or bad people need different things um but if you're hanging around here with us my guess is you'd like to have a little say in how how your heart in the and the boss are going to commit. So I think, remember that. Ask for help. Say, hey, you know, believe you me. Hey, it's Mary, and she doesn't want Dottie to have a heart attack. So could you just clear those lights to green? And so I whisked her as fast as I could. <laughs> thank you. Uh, right, thank you. <laughs> uh, Yeah, okay, I had another experience, and it, it's called the ready room. Now, my belief system, and I don't think anybody has to believe what I believe. That's one of the values, I think, of our church, is that you don't have to believe it because the person, the preacher, uh, or preaches, is that what we are? <laughs> preaches, uh, says that, that that's what they think. But I do believe that, that we come back more than once. And so, uh, how does that all work? So this, again, was another dream. And I called it infinite he, infinite she in the ready room. Because in my dream, or my imaginings, or who knows how that all works, um, there are rules for returning to this planet. And one is the seal of forgetting. But um, because... It, if you came back here with a full understanding of how magnificent it was up there, you'd be here about a week and a half and say, this is nuts. I'm not, you know, <laughs> pull me out of here. <laughs> so they say there is a seal of forgetting. They, they wipe our, um, well, you've got to it. Let me see if I can give you this. And so. so in this uh, dream, he that I was referred to throughout the dream was Tom, my husband. And she, this is she. So um, I was called, Mary was called to the ready room saying, we're having some trouble with um, Tom. He wants to go back with memory. He feels as though he can do more um, if he was able to bring his memory with him. He would have a, a um, a better understanding of how it all worked and he, they said but well, we're pretty good at our job and we've been trying to keep him from storing it but we see that he's really working hard at it and he's pretty developed so usually they lovingly put your cosmic uh, memory to sleep so you get if you get it down here you get it in little vignettes you know you usually don't have days of remembering what it was like in spirit um, and what they do is they bring you to the ready room. I, I don't even know if this is true, but it's a story. They bring you to the ready room and you look down as to, uh, you help to choose, and then you look down as, and develop a relationship with the family that you're going into. 
and um, it be your memory begins to slip away as you watch your new home grow and as you begin to really connect to a bond, particularly with your new mother. And uh, Tom went through those observational periods and made the connection with his new mother, but those connections simply renewed his resolve. She was very anxious, and she was, uh, and she was afraid of life. And the more he came in with, he thought, the sooner he could help her. But when he went to the ready room to prepare and pray, he tucked away the memory of God and the plans for Earth's goals. And he spread them across different places of his consciousness. I don't know how to do that. He wouldn't tell me when I tried. I just gave him two cups of coffee and everything, and he still was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> right. he, um, he spread them across different places in his consciousness, which made it harder for the angels that ran the ready room to block it all out. And so I watched him, and I was worried about him. Uh, uh, she was him, and he was her. We have been together in many lifetimes, we think. But she knew, as always, that the decision was his. In, in um, different areas in our relationship, different people, one or the other, leads it. And he always has led the spiritual decisions that were made for the family. Um, the angels also knew you didn't get an angelic assignment in the chamber unless you were all seeing. And so they tried to direct the knowing exchanges to the risk of returning aware. They tried to tell him, if you go back with all this information, it's not going to make your life easier there. It's going to make it harder. So he said, oh, yeah, okay. But he, um, he was driven at this time, determined to get this life right and to compensate for lost lifetimes. And they sighed as they conferred. He had never really forgiven himself for his humanity last time. I couldn't remember what that was. I didn't see it either, so I missed out on that. Um, thank heavens he was returning through the Christian channel this time because Jesus had taught that best, taught that best. Perhaps he could get in on that plane. So what it said to me, if, if there's any validity, is that you, People go through and just are sent into different religions, uh, religious-based locations to uh, the ones that they think that will help them the most in that particular lifetime. Interesting thought. Um, they said they would do their be best to see pass through, but they agreed that they wouldn't drain the memory. They'd settle for dimming and pray relentlessly for his success and self-forgiveness. And so he returned July 9th, 1935, passing through the universal planes aligned in the constellation Cancer, guaranteed tender memory accessible into the world, preparing for war. God help us all. He arrived safely, but with even more memory intact than they had planned. Surely the moved, uh, surely more pained than he had planned. He had forgotten how helpless you are when you arrive how frustrating it is to know there's more, better, higher, and then be able to get around. Unless called home, they don't let you out of that body in the early months. Nobody would stay if they did. So you're stuck in this cumbersome, non-communicative vehicle. You still fought the thoughts, but nobody received him. She, I, became anxious while watching. He was not sinking his energy root. Connect, connect, she prayed as she tried to will him into responding, but the link was the weakest it had been in lifetimes. Oh, dear God, what if he has lost a memory of me? How would they find each other down there? She began to shift, I began to shift my preparation time. When to re-enter? Not too soon. I need to know he was going to stay, but, um, but not too late, because then the time is complex on Earth, and we might not be able to connect up. So how could uh, he be complicating this so much? She would have to take the responsibility for finding him, and it had to be right, and they certainly had learned that the last time. He must have had some last time. Uh, it was hard to watch him from there, from heaven. He, his, her beloved was in pain. He wanted so much, he wanted to give it, but he couldn't understand why they had no sense of him. They were treating him like a baby. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> His parents were so frightened that war was coming. The father had been so devastated in the one before. His daddy uh, in World War I was a sergeant in charge of the um, floodlights you turned onto the sky to try and shoot down the planes. Well, so, so what do you think the first thing that you would do if you have, were a pilot would be? You'd shoot out the, the lights. The lights huh? So he lost so many people uh, that worked for him that were, you know, doing the lights. That he was, uh, even years later when the, um, a car would backfire unexpectedly, he would jump. PTSD. Yeah. So I said, he was already spreading, uh, spreading out his uh, roots, trying to support them in their fear. And I, and I called out to him, not yet, beloved, sink that cord into the planet first. He hated it here, there. He knew that there were more ways he could help, but nobody would let him. He'd mastered communicating in their limited way quickly. They thought that was charming, but they didn't want his ideas, only his charm. Didn't they remember anything? It was too late to sink a root now. He wasn't even sure he wanted one. He wasn't even sure he wanted to stay. He was five years old, standing on the porch in the Bronx on July 9th, 1940. I'm sorry I've come. I don't want to stay. It's just a cold, painful place, and it hurts too much. He looked so fragile standing on the steps. I couldn't stand it. I'm going in, I said. I'll take the family upstate. They'll be just fine. The angels replied, no, they're not just fine. They're complex and pained and Irish. Anything could go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going in. I'll do whatever you want. Take away my memory. I promise to sink roots for two. Just let me in there. So we've been together so often, he'll know somehow that I've arrived and it will help him. My root... Um, Would the others come in? Uh, I'm going in and I beg your blessing. Will the others come in as planned? So that tells me, uh, or if, you know, if any of this is anything but a silly dream, that we do come back with more, more than just an, an individual partner. There are, there are clusters of people who come in together. Um, no time to be concerned, as always, he came first. November 18th, 1940, Oneana, New York. It was cold and snowing, and my thoughts wandered. I hated the snow. <laughs> Life is hard, but I knew that, and I'm staying, and he's staying, and so here we go. Memories already fading. Please, your blessings. What a nice mommy, but soft. Her mother, strong enough for all of us until I'm ready. Ready for what, I wonder. I wonder a lot. Sometimes I sat on the porch outside and wondered, and one day I thought I saw him, and I was so lonely and sad and he appeared just for a moment and held me, telling me it's going to be okay. I believed him, and then he was gone, and so was my memory. Interesting experience, yeah, huh? Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank and you I, so much. Huh? I said, that was wonderful. Thank you. I, 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 I thought, you know, gee, maybe, maybe it's, it's my experience and it's too intimate to share with you. You don't, you don't want to hear all that blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the potential that it says. The potential that it says is that we come back and forth. And why would you do that if it wasn't a learning place? So if you look at this as a learning place, a place where we're supposed to learn how to grow, a place where we're supposed to learn how to manage ourselves, a place where we're supposed to learn about the forces for good versus the forces for dark, then it's, I think it's easier to experience, you know, the things that happen to us. If you think that if, I, if I'm a really good girl, bad things won't happen, that's not true. Uh -huh. You know, I'm a really good girl, well, sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and believe you me, things have happened. But I, I think I'm going to close now, Daddy, because I, and I can feel Daddy go, mm, Mary. <laughs> I love you so. <laughs> um, hold that peace to you. Let the story go. It's just a story, a story you could hurt anywhere. But hold the piece to you that says, I come because a force that's beyond my un full understanding wants me to grow here, wants me to become a better person here, wants me to do something different here. And so surrender yourself to being inspired 
as to what the divine in you had planned and see if it doesn't come back and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I can have somebody volunteer to pass the basket. Okay. And uh, Dr. Eileen, could you be do our closing prayer? I I was so sure. delighted to see you. I don't I don't we don't know how much longer we're going to have her here. It's not because she's dying, it's because she might be moving. Well, I mean eventually, but <laughs> I had a whole so, thing on that, but I didn't talk about it. <laughs> So, now that you mention it. And uh, if you could say our prayer of uh, donation, and here, here we go. Okay. We Giving to the ministry from which I received my spiritual support and nurturing is an affirmation and consciousness of the truth that spirit is the prospering power enriching every area of my life. And so it is. Thank so you so, so it is. much. And you can pass the basket and... Uh, yeah, maybe somebody would even help you if you want, Ruth. Yeah. Huh? Oh, no, I was just saying, oh. somebody might help you if you want. Oh. And you keep in mind, if you... Is that why there's two? That's why there's two. This was just a big basket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have anything to put in, then just place your hand over the basket and put in a blessing. A blessing for, for peace, a blessing for all those for whom Memorial Day is meant to honor, a blessing for all those who never did know what happened to their loved ones. A blessing for all those who travel. A blessing for all those who are graduating and starting a new life and all our young people heading out. You know, that's kind of scary. And it's scary for a parent. So definite blessings for them too. So the reason that I will be sneaking in at the very last minute is that I've been hired to be the pastor for another church and perform all the Sunday services throughout the month of June, you know, this week and, and throughout June. So I will be staying. My goal, knock wood, prayer for that too, that I will be able to leave in the first week in July for New York. So, um, which it's funny because the lady I'm staying with, Hilda, said, it's like, you know, I'm thinking about taking another trip. How about you stay through July? It's like, no, no, <laughs> no. no, thank you. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is. And it is about being able to say goodbye. And I promise all of you that I will not leave before I say goodbye. So, you know, this this community has been a part of me ever since I walked in in 2009 to a very interesting, eclectic little group. It's like, look, I'm just having an office here, so. <laughs> right. And then I said, wouldn't you like to be a minister? <laughs> well, it was an office that became a home. It was the place that I had pulled up to when minutes before I found out my brother died. I was coming to the church service. I got the call. I was sitting in the parking lot. I considered driving away, and then I thought, no, I need to be here with my family. So, yes, and I will carry it with me to New York as well. Thank you. You know, change always happens. Yes. And, you know, it is hard sometimes. And, you know, and as Mary beautifully said, we're in good hands that there is a plan mm -hmm. that we agreed to. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the old, if I knew then what I know now. Right. Yeah, right. But the only thing is, the only reason you know now is because you didn't know then. So everybody take a nice deep breath in and let it out. Dear, blessed, wonderful, amazing creator, we thank you for this day and we thank you for our lives. We thank you for the blessing of each and every moment and each and every breath. We thank you for being there for us through our victories and our low points. We thank you for understanding that we're doing our best. We thank you for believing in us even when we don't believe in ourselves. We thank you for loving us to a level that in this life we are incapable of understanding. Thank you for the blessing of, and please bless all who have served in militaries throughout all time, no matter what army they were with. Creator, please bless them and let them know that their service 
to their nations are appreciated. Creator, please bless all those who had to wait, who had to sit at home and worry, or who ended up getting very, very bad news in a letter or a telegram. Creator, we thank you for the blessing of all those who honor those who serve, all those who serve currently, all those who will serve one day. And we hope that when that one day comes, they will have better things to do than fight. Creator, we thank you for the blessing of community and fellowship, for the spirit that you placed within us that we extend to one another. We thank you for being there for us. And Creator, whatever it means to you, we hope you have a wonderful day <laughs> for all your creation to the next seven generations and beyond. Aho Matako Yasin, Ago, 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 by earth, sea, and sky. Namaste, Shalom, Assalamu Alaikum, Blessed be, and Amen. amen. And quickly before you leave, thank you so much for the wonderful prayer. How's Patty really doing? Uh, Patty is, she's recovering. Yay. She is, she is healing in body. Now we need to work on her healing in spirit. She is very afraid. And as someone and anybody who knew Pat, knows Patty, um, you know how independent she is. And she suddenly realized that she will no longer be able to be that independent. And it is a very, very, very hard, scary, and lonely place. Um, she'd be happy to have visitors. And still at the home? Or? She's still at um, the Valley Valley House uh, over on Clyde. Uh -huh. And did I? Yeah, 991. Yeah. Um, I gave she's Corky room... the address, room 122. Yeah. And um, she's, she's going through. I've been spending a lot of time with her. And... She's getting there though. She is sitting up. She is able to walk. Now she's just curious about what will happen when she leaves there, which may mean her going and moving to Southern California to be closer to her son. And there's that discussion to have. But, you know, she is hanging in there. And, you know, prayers for her are definitely appreciated. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are some um, little. Um, pins that are in the old days they had those paper um flowers the red flower the you know and so i i got some online and i just got a pack when i got it so if somebody would like one please take it and they're poppies for, yes poppies red yes, poppies. poppies and that's what they used to plant on the graves yeah Th thank you so very much mary we have coffee here please stay and have a cup of coffee and and share anything you would like we also have food for you to be taking home with you, and we want to thank you so very much for being here, and uh, thank you for the time to be here on Sunday. We so appreciate it, and thank you for our speaker, and Tim, you were incredible. Thank you for the songs, for the music, it was great, it was great. and don't forget to thank Ed for all of the work that he does, and, and, and who, who's on Zoom? Uh, Ann Corbin, Jeannie, Laura, Mel Betancourt, Patty, and Joyce, and an anonymous Zoom user. Okay, well, that's a, hey, I like that. Any messages from them? <laughs> the peanut gallery is totally quiet. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. They, look what happened. Happen. You they don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Mary. Thank, thank you all. And don't forget, hug somebody before you leave. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for coming. Bye now. Yeah. Woo! Oh.